Thank you, Chairman Daniel and Commissioners, uh, for allowing people to speak, even though they're not on the agenda. Um, I uh, am here to talk about elections very briefly. Uh, a lot of people are concerned about the state of our elections, and I understand that you believe that there's not anything you can do, but I do want to make sure that whoever's watching online and to make this part of the record, um, that there are people who are very concerned about this. Um, on Labor Day this year, uh, I was made aware that there was a commissioner in Bay County who got up in front of her, the audience, a large audience who had come, uh, much bigger than this, who had come and they were petitioning the board for paper ballots changing to paper ballots. And um, the motion was tabled. They want to think about it. And she got up in front of the people and she spoke. And these are her words, and I'd just like to read them. These are words from a commissioner in my county. <coughs> I cannot imagine a single taxpaying citizen in the state of Georgia that is not familiar with our state election issues. Often, I'm approached by concerned voters about our election process. Here's the question. Can we fulfill the points of the law and hand count our ballots for the voters' peace of mind? That is the only question. I'm standing here because so many people believe that the, that riser she was talking about in her commission and the few, the few feet between the riser and the people represent the great gulf between American citizens and the government. I am a citizen first. There are some really great citizens sitting on that riser, and I would say that applies here. <coughs> I ran for office because the America I grew up in is disappearing before my very eyes. Do you remember when our families ate dinner together at the same table? Do you remember when we prayed in school? Do you remember when we called Christmas Christmas? When we said the Pledge of Allegiance? When we stood for the national anthem? when our Olympic athletes were proud to represent the red, white, and blue, when we stood with law enforcement instead of defunding them, when boys did not compete in girls' sports, when Martin Luther King was dream that a person would be judged on the content of their character, not the color of their skin, when there was no such thing as drag queen story hour. It's like I woke up one day in a nation I did not recognize. Hand counting ballots today is so much more than the sum of the election results. It may very well mean the difference between freedom and incarceration. This year, the state of Georgia and the state of Michigan both have proven that questioning the elections could lead to your indictment. In Chatham County, Georgia, a citizen was physically picked up by law enforcement officers and removed from the Board of Elections meeting room for questioning and update on documents that the board was advised to produce by a grand jury to which she had filed a petition. In Michigan, the winner of the attorney general's race had the loser indicted. His crime was following a court order that said examine a voting machine. 
In Fulton County, a former Marine, Harrison Floyd, spent five days in jail because he didn't negotiate a bond agreement prior to his surrender like the other 18 in the indictment. He, why was it necessary to hold him in jail for five days? What was his crime? What were the other 18 people's crimes? Questioning the results of electronic voting equipment. In Coffee County, the former election sur supervisor was indicted by the Fulton County District Attorney over failing equipment. Two more sentences. Does this speech qualify me for persecution? I don't know, only time will tell. But what I do know is the only thing that stands between America the Beautiful and national hopelessness is the voter. Thank you. 
This is parcel B01061. It's currently zoned B1 in the commercial, um, corridor commercial carriage area. And the request is to rezone the property from B1 to B2 uh, for ALC <coughs> and improving LLC and office rental space. This is the CASA plan that you have in your application packets showing the two buildings on the property, proposed two buildings on the property. A slightly larger plan view. This is the previous concept plan from the rezone 4525 and where it was zoned for a convenience store. These are the proposed representative photos. And staff recommends conditional approval with our three standard conditions and number four, the applicant shall install buffers as required for section 806, payroll 8.1. A 50 foot landscape buffer must be installed along both the east and west property lines due to the adjacent less than 10 uh, to the east and west of the same property. Additionally, the required stormwater management basement and any required on site sewer drain lines shall not be located entirely or partially within any required buffer. And number five, the driveway should be shifted to align with the central parking area between the two buildings to enhance access by employees and the public. In addition to the required landscape strip, the service area at the rear of the building one should be screened from view from Atlanta Highway by a minimum 10 foot wide evergreen buffer that is with a minimum of six feet in height at the time of planning and being the standard set in section 808. The planning commission recommends approval subject to the staff conditions. Hey, I'm the owner of KLC Cooling. I have a file. My office right now is in Watkinsville. We are growing and we are needing to expand to a place that will suit me, my staff, my office ladies, and everybody around me. And allowing me to have equipment stored inside and stuff so I don't have to keep going to different supply houses. I can have stuff there on hand. Uh, I do appreciate on taking the, the opportunity for me to be up here to vote on this and uh, I, I, I hope you all give it to me and allow me to move forward with this. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 
fight here outside the city limits. And they're currently zoned AG in the workplace center character area. And again, the request is a reasonable portion of the property from Ward 1, the city of Bogart, and AG, and Oconee County to industrial in the city of Bogart, and OVP uh, in Oconee County to bring into compliance the ongoing unpermitted uses of the property. This is the concept plan that was submitted with the application packet. And let's see, I think I have a slightly larger version. Uh, but this is the location proposed for the storage of the uh, emergency uh, uh, management trailers. And staff recommends a conditional approval with our standard three conditions. Number four, the owner shall convey water to reasonable as required by Oconee County. And number five, the owner shall install a 20 foot landscape buffer along the University Parkway, Highway 316 frontage that meets the design standards set uh, first section 808 of the Oconee County Public Code. And planning commission recommends approval of the same condition.
15 to 18% results in 42 extra feet of clearing on either side. Uh, it's our hope that we can minimize this for three large lots. There's no intention of subdividing further. It's just for three landowners, and we have to answer any questions you may have. Thanks.
beginning of October 1 of this year expires September 27. Uh, those two sources of change and the report will go. Second. Motion second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carried. Next item is discussing the Center of Budget Amendment to have hotel and motel sales tax capital funds to be used for the Budget Center. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Commissioners, this is the companion piece to the item on the consent agenda that the Tourism and Visitors Bureau voted to appropriate $50,000 hotel motel funds for utilization at the Lincoln Daniel House as a welcome center. That requires the Board of Commissioners to perform the budget amendment as part of the appropriation process. Happy to answer any questions you may have. Any questions on the side? Does any commissioner wish any item to be removed from the 